food. Check on the screen. Right, I think we're live. Uh, kia ora koutou, uh, ko Andrew Sargent, uh, toko ingwa. Um, today we are going over the level two gene expression uh, exam um, with our guest, uh, Amy Rowe. Uh, Amy is a bio teacher at uh, Wellington Girls College. Um, these streams are brought to you by uh, Study It. So at the end of this uh, webinar, if you have any questions, you can just go into the description. Um, and you can click on study it and go ask questions there, um, as well as you can put them in the chat. Uh, for today, just because on Friday we had a lot of a lot of people and putting a lot of uh, questions in the chat. If you can, just put questions in the chat. Don't try and chat to each other. If you don't know, if you do know the answer to someone's question in the chat, um, then feel free to sort of answer it. But we'll try and keep it not so cluttered, um, just so it's easy for Amy and I to sort of keep track on. Um, yeah, if there's too much spam in there, I'll just end up having to delete all the messages. I apologise, but that just sort of makes it a bit easier for us. Um, other than that, oh, the PowerPoint, so the PowerPoint that you'll see in front of you is now in the description of the video. You might have to refresh the video for it to show up. Um, but other than that, without further ado, over to you, Amy. Thank you. Kia ora tato, students, level two students. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to you today about gene expression. Um, this is probably my favourite of the three level two standards. Um, I know all of you have probably or probably know a lot about um, genes and DNA um, and you know a lot about um, phenotypes of organisms, um, but this standard is the one that kind of links the DNA to the phenotype. So it explains how we go from uh, a long polymer of different DNA bases uh, and how that creates different uh, variations or different phenotypes in an organism um, and it's also the one that I studied most at university so that's why it's my favorite one. So for our standard um, you'll see that you can broadly break it down into um, three big chunks. So we have protein synthesis first uh, which is where you'll learn all about proteins and amino acids and um, how proteins are made. Um, we know they're made through the processes of transcription and translation um, and we'll talk about um, the structure of proteins and how and why it's important um, and how proteins are folded up as well. From there, we'll also talk about mutations, um, so particularly point mutations. This is where we have um, changes to the base sequence of a gene, um, insertions and deletions, and particularly frame shifts as well. And we'll talk about redundancy and degeneracy um, in the genetic code and what sort of impact those po point mutations might have on the resulting protein. And then we'll also finish off by looking at metabolic pathways, um, looking at uh, how uh, changes to a metabolic pathway can lead to changes in the phenotype of an organism, uh, the effect of mutations on those um, metabolic pathways, and also the effect, the effect of environment on metabolic pathways and gene expression in general. So that's where we're going. Um, I'm going to try and whip through it a little bit quicker than the, uh, the what we did with um, cell bio on Friday, just to make sure we get through it all um, and hopefully um, spend a bit of time on some past exam questions. Alrighty, so let's start off by talking about proteins. Um, you should know that proteins are biological molecules and they're made up of um, long strings of amino acids all linked together in a chain. So they're um, amino acids linked together by what's called a peptide bond. So you often hear a long chain of amino acids being called a polypeptide chain. So poly meaning many. Peptide refers to the peptide bond that holds them together in chain is because they're kind of linked together like um, pearls in a chain. So a polypeptide chain is a long string of amino acids. Um, they, these proteins are v absolutely vital for living organisms because pretty much all living things are made of protein. Um, and proteins have um, very essential roles um, in a cell or an organism, including giving it structure, uh, making up the um the plasma membrane and all of the organelles inside um, the, uh, a cell. Uh, they've got roles as transport proteins, as antibodies, uh, and crucially as enzymes as well. So um, enzymes are responsible for catalyzing different uh, biochemical reactions. 
Now, hopefully you remember that the, all the instructions for making proteins for a cell are coded for by genes, and genes are the long sequences of DNA, of base pairs um, that are encoded in our um, nucleus. The DNA sequence is used by our cells to create proteins in a process called protein synthesis, and we can break protein synthesis down into three key parts. They are transcription, translation, and finally, protein folding. So, Transcription, translation, and uh, protein folding. Why are these important? Well, what you can see on your screen at the moment are um, a selection of questions uh, from three different years of um, the gene expression exam. So you've got 2016, 2017, and 2020. And you can see that in all of these, you're asked to discuss the relationship between DNA, mRNA, and tRNA uh, in the process of... Um, of uh, protein synthesis and how these molecules are involved in forming proteins, um, given an explanation of the function of DNA, mRNA and tRNA, an explanation of how mRNA is produced, what is the significance of these. Okay, and so you get these very, very similar questions from year to year. Um, so what your examiners want to know and what the, um, the exam is designed to test you on is that you understand all of the, the players if you like, in um, protein synthesis. So you understand all of the different parts and how they work together um, to produce um, a protein. And there will almost always be some sort of question where you're asked to basically explain the process of protein synthesis. So, oh, I see there's lots of questions already. Uh, independent assortment and segregation, we'll be talking about that on Monday. Uh, that's part of the genetic variation topic. Is it wrong to talk about how genes code for the instructions for an enzyme in the cellular processes standard? No, not at all. Um, for protein folding, what would you say? The polypeptide chain folds to a secondary structure, then to a 3D protein structure. Or must you mention the tertiary structure? Well, the 3D protein structure is the tertiary structure. Um, tertiary is probably a better way to put it, but I don't believe that you're examined on that. Uh, and is there only one copy of DNA in each cell's nucleus? If it could fit through the nuclear membrane, would it still be too risky for it to go? Yes, there's one copy of DNA in, of the to total DNA in each cell's nucleus. Um, would it still be too risky for it to go out? So we only have enough DNA in our nucleus for all of the, the processes that we need. So, yeah, it does need to stay uh, within the nucleus. Uh, is protein synthesis both transcription and translation or just one? Yes. So transcription and translation and protein folding are the three processes that are involved in protein synthesis. So you can't have protein synthesis without transcription or translation or protein folding. They're all really, really important. Okay. So... Just to recap, genes are sections of DNA that provide the instructions for making proteins. So we say that they, um, well, the level one definition would be that they are sections of DNA that code for a trait or a characteristic. Um, but at level two, we want to go a little bit deeper than that and we say that they provide the instructions for making a protein. And as I mentioned before, proteins are made of amino acids linked together in a chain by peptide bonds to form a polypeptide chain. In our genes, it's the order of the bases in the DNA sequence that determines the sequence of amino acids that um, get put together in our polypeptide chain. And the order and sequence of those amino acids determines the shape and function of the protein. Remember, we're dealing with chemicals here, so there's not a whole lot of, um, of um, engineering that goes into it. Um, so um, making sure that the um, sequence of amino acids is correct in our polypeptide chain is vital to making sure the protein is going to fold up into the correct shape to be functional. Now, a cell's DNA is stored in the nucleus to protect it from chemical degradation in the cytoplasm. Um, you'll remember from our um, cellular processes talk that there are loads, loads, truckloads of enzymes um, and other chemical compounds floating around in the cytoplasm of a cell. Um, DNA is absolutely precious. As I was saying, each cell has one copy of its DNA uh, and it gets stored in the nucleus to protect it from any degradation or damage by anything that might um, come in contact with it in the cytoplasm. So DNA is a large molecule. It's double-stranded, so it's not going to be able to fit through the nuclear pore and move from the nucleus to the cytoplasm anyway, um, but we don't want it to. It's, it's the reason it's... Or 
the reason it's important for the DNA to be stored in the nucleus is to protect it from damage and degradation. If you can imagine our DNA in our nucleus is our master copy of a very precious book, we want to make sure that that gets looked after um, and doesn't get um, damaged because we'll lose those very important instructions for protein synthesis. However, protein synthesis occurs in the cytoplasm, so we need to find a way to get that very precious um, instruction manual from the nucleus where it's being protected out to the cytoplasm where protein synthesis occurs. So that process is what we know, what we call transcription. So the transcription is the process where um, the DNA message uh, is transcribed or rewritten into mRNA um, so that it can leave the nucleus. Um, the mRNA is designed to be a faithful copy of the gene's DNA sequence uh, and we make that copy so that it can be exported out of the nucleus to the cytoplasm where um, translation and the rest of protein synthesis takes place. So as I mentioned, DNA can't leave the nucleus because it needs to be protected from damage and degradation so that we store it away in the nucleus uh, and it's also very large so it's not a, it's not able to fit through a nuclear pore because it's just too big. So transcription involves the creation of making a single stranded copy of our gene, uh, but we're going to make it out of mRNA, which is a single stranded molecule uh, that is able to leave the nucleus. So a bit about RNA. There are three different types you're going to need to know about. Uh, the first one I mentioned, which was mRNA or messenger RNA, uh, and it's responsible for carrying the genetic message from the DNA in the nucleus out to the ribosome and the cytoplasm. Uh, other types you're going to hear about are ribosomal RNA. So it makes up part of the ribosome, which is a very important organelle in the cytoplasm that's responsible for protein synthesis. And also tRNA or transfer RNA, which is involved in the translation process, the second stage of protein synthesis, and that occurs at the ribosome. So RNA is um, similar to DNA, it's a biological messenger molecule, but it's a lot simpler. So um, it's still made of a chain of nucleotides, but instead of being deoxyribose nucleotides, they're just ribose nucleotides. So there's a slightly different sugar uh, molecule involved in making it up. Where DNA is double-stranded, forming that um, twisted ladder or double helix shape, RNA is just a single-stranded. So you can see a copy of it there on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, it's just a single strand of nucleotides linked together. Another difference that you'll remember for RNA is there is no thymine in RNA. So DNA is made up of four bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, whereas um, RNA is made up of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So instead of thymine, uh, we replace it with uracil rather than thymine. So transcription, this is the, um, the process of turning that very precious DNA sequence into an mRNA copy uh, before it leaves the nucleus. So our DNA, uh, or our length of DNA, DNA our gene has three very important regions. So the first one is the promoter region. The promoter region is important for turning a gene on and off and signals the start of transcription or the start of protein synthesis. Um, so uh, for a gene to be transcribed, um, so turned from DNA into uh, mRNA, uh, we need to have um, enzymes bind to the promoter region of our gene uh, to signal that that gene is ready to be transcribed. We have the coding region, so this is the important part. It's got the base sequence, which contains the instructions for our protein. And then at the other end, we have a terminator sequence. And you might guess from the name that the terminator sequence will signal the end of the sequence. So when RNA polymerase is rocking along the um, DNA strand, uh, transcribing uh, the coding region, once it reaches the terminator sequence, um, it gets a signal that it is done transcribing the gene and it can stop. So that is the, um, it's like a big stop sign. It's the purpose of the terminator sequence. So transcription starts when RNA polymerase binds to the promoter region of the gene and then it's going to start rocking along that DNA sequence uh, in the coding region, making a copy of um, the DNA strand or a complementary copy of the DNA strand. Um, You'll remember, hopefully, from um, the cells topic that DNA um, has two strands. Uh, we refer to one as the coding strand. So our coding strand has the DNA sequence that needs to be copied. Uh, 
Uh, but we can't copy it directly. So we wouldn't have got no way of copying it directly. What we do is we look at the opposite strand, the template strand, which is complementary to the coding strand. So it's actually the template strand that is most important for transcription. RNA polymerase will um, bind to the template strand and it will move along the um, template strand, uh, joining up uh, complementary uh, bases to the template strand and then linking them together into one mRNA sequence. Um, just checking the questions. There are a lot. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Not, uh, not directly related to protein synthesis by the looks of it. I think where's the, where's the top when you finish? I think it starts, where does it start? What's the difference between protein synthesis and prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes? That's the one. Yes, you only need to know about protein synthesis and eukaryotes. Cool, and you don't need the other one? Cool. Um, what happens to the RN, uh, MN, uh, you can read the rest from there. Yeah. Um, does both transcription and translation have promoter regions, coding regions, and terminator regions? No. So the promoter coding region and terminator region are only found um, on the DNA template strand. Um, so that's the only time you would talk about those was during transcription. Uh, when we get to translation, you're talking about start codons and stop codons, uh, but we will get to that. Um, what does it mean to turn a gene on and off? Um, if a gene is turned on, it is being transcribed and translated and it is being used to make a protein. Um, if a gene has been turned off, it's not being transcribed, translated, or well, making a protein. It's just sitting there unused. Um, do we say mRNA codons are complementary to the template strand triplets? Yes. And the codons are equivalent to the coding, coding strand triplets. Yes, that's correct. Um, what is the purpose of transcription? Um, so it's to make an mRNA copy of the DNA sequence so that the mRNA copy can leave the nucleus um, and head out to the cytoplasm and find a ribosome, which is the site of translation. Um, do we need to mention which way the RNA polymerase moves along the template strand? No. Nope, you don't because um, it is not defined. Sometimes it will go in the five prime to three prime direction and other times it will go in the three prime to five prime. So, um, no, you don't need that. Uh, do we need to talk about introns and exons? If you know about introns and exons, it can't hurt, but no, you don't need to. Um, is mRNA small enough to leave the nucleus? Yes, that is its job. Um, do both transcription and translation have three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination? But yeah, I guess they do, yeah. Um, I don't usually see it described that way, though, so it's not something that you need to know. Alrighty, I'm going to move along. Here we have transcription. Um, hopefully you can see my cursor. We have our double-stranded DNA up here in the blue and the red. You can see we've got one strand. The coding strand is in red, and our template strand is in blue. Uh, and what's happened here is, and I believe it would have happened over here on the right-hand side of our diagram, um, RNA polymerase will have bound, no, sorry, it must have happened to the left, doesn't matter. Um, RNA polymerase will have bound to um, our DNA strand um, and unwound the two sides of our double helix. So you can see our coding strand up the top here, okay, and our template strand, the blue one, down the bottom here. Now, RNA polymerase is moving along the template strand down here and T, C, G, T, G, T, A, G, G, etc. Um, and what it's doing is it's recruiting these free RNA nucleotides and these free RNA nucleotides are going to come and sit down and match up with the exposed bases on the template strand. When they do, RNA polymerase is going to link them all together along their backbone to create this long, newly made mRNA strand here. Okay, um, so when I've marked this paper before, I get a lot of people saying that the DNA gets turned into mRNA, uh, which is not quite accurate. Um, the DNA template strand is exposed and RNA polymerase matches up free nucleotides, free individual um, building blocks of mRNA, if you like, uh, and matches them up according to the sequence along the template strand and builds a whole new mRNA molecule. 
Okay, so we're not sending DNA into mRNA. We are building a whole new mRNA molecule that is complementary to the DNA template strand. Okay, and yes, um, to answer that question earlier, um, the uh, template through the mRNA is uh, the same sequence as we would expect to see on the coding strand, except all of the T's, thymines, have been turned into uracil, okay? Uh, and it is a single strand. All right, so to explain that in words, we'd say that the, the RNA polymerase binds to the promoter region of the gene and the DNA double helix will unzip and RNA polymerase works along the template strand. So it's important to remember it's the template strand that's the important one. Free RNA nucleotides will bind to the template strand according to the complementary base pairing rules, which we hopefully all remember, cytosine with guanine and adenine with uracil. And RNA polymerase works along the template strand, linking up the free nucleotides together to create the mRNA transcript, or just to say, you can say just to create the mRNA. When mRNA polymerase reaches the terminator sequence, transcription is completed. Uh, so the RNA polymerase will detach from the template strand, so it will um, unhitch 